I'm Steve from This Oak With Cars, and behind me is the 2022 Ford Lightning. And you may not have noticed, but I think this is giving us a glimpse of what power sports in the future is going to look like. Over here, I have my Zero motorcycle, and Zero has formed a partnership with Polaris. Polaris is going to use Zero's technology to build electric ATVs and snowmobiles. There is already a huge variety of electric motocross bikes on the market. And coming this summer, we are going to see a bunch of manufacturers bringing us electric Grom sized motorbikes. So in the future, when you've trailered your electric power sports vehicles to the off-road park or the place that you're going to jump on your snowmobile and go for a ride, how are you going to recharge them? Well, I think the 2022 Ford Lightning is going to show us a glimpse of how that's going to work. The 2022 Ford F-150 Lightning is equipped with three separate inverters. If we go into our settings and we go to Pro Power on board, we can see the three different zones. The center zone has an inverter that powers the power port up front as well as one in the back. This power port is normally on all the time when the vehicle is turned on. The front zone has 120 volt 20 amp outlets and if we want to turn those on, we just tap right there. The rear inverter has an additional four 120 volt 20 amp outlets as well as one 240 volt 30 amp outlet and to turn it on, we tap right there. That gets us about 9600 watts available to charge our electric power sports off the front and rear of the Ford Lightning. Let's plug my zero in and I'll show you the difference between the 120 volt outlets and the 240 volt outlets. To charge up our electric power sports, we will need an electric car charger. This is the one that actually came with my zero motorcycle. This has a normal 110 volt outlet on this side. And the other side will plug into pretty much any electric vehicle out there. Over here in the back of the Ford Lightning, we have four ports available that we can plug this charger in, and we have another four up front. Let's plug this charger into the Zero motorcycle and see if it works. The charging port on the Zero is located under this door. We'll plug in the charger. The bike is turning on. It says the battery is at 56% and it is now starting to charge. It's currently charging at 14 amps and it says it will take 4 hours and 38 minutes if we want to take the bike to a full charge. I'm going to stop it right now so I can show you how much better the 240 volt outlet is. We'll remember that we have 4 hours and 38 minutes to charge and we're charging at only 14 amps. This truck has a 240 volt outlet. This is the typical connector that you would see on a generator. And this is my larger 240 volt 32 amp charger that I use here at the shop. This however takes a different 240 volt outlet from what the truck has. This is the typical 240 volt 50 amp outlet that RVs and campers use. So to connect this, we will need an adapter like this which has our generator connector on one side and our camper outlet on the other. Now let's connect this charger to the Zero motorcycle. This is the 240 volt charger. The bike is turning on. Again, we're still at 56% charge. Now we're charging at 28 amps and it will only take us two hours and 13 minutes to take the bike to a full charge. Under normal conditions, you would not even charge the bike to 100%. 70 to 80% is what I normally charge this to, but that's two hours and 13 minutes to 100% charge. Charging one electric vehicle from the Ford Lightning is no big deal. I have my electric car sitting right there, so let's plug that into one of the front outlets. My electric car uses lead acid batteries, so it would prefer the slower charger. So that's what I'm going to be plugging into the car. This is a 110 volt 20 amp outlet. 
And remember, we still have the capacity to plug in another one of these chargers in the rear and charge a third EV. My electric car is now charging as well. Let's take a look at the stats on the screen inside. On the screen, it is showing us that the car is drawing 1,620 watts. And the bike is drawing 1,550 watts from two separate circuits, giving it a total of just over 3,000 watts. Based on these graphs, my suspicion is that one set of the 120 volt outlets is on circuit A and the other is on circuit B. Which means that we have the capacity to plug in two more electric vehicle chargers in the rear of the truck, giving us a total of four electric vehicle chargers. Now you might be saying to yourself, well, you've just driven out in the wilderness and now you're using all of your power to recharge your power sports. How are you going to get home? Well, if we scroll down and we know how far it's going to be for us to take our trip home, we can leave our electric vehicles charging and the inverters will automatically turn off when this minimum range is met. So right now these chargers are going to run and they're going to charge up these electric vehicles until either they're fully charged, which it looks like the car might be because the power just went way down on that circuit, or until the minimum range has been met. We are about to see a huge change in motorsports and power sports. And I really think that the 2022 Ford Lightning is showing us the future. This really might be the most significant vehicle that Ford has ever produced since the Model T. If you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.